we have a ton of Azure updates coming out of Microsoft Ignite. And as an added bonus, I promise not to use the word metaverse for the rest of this episode. We have new releases and updates that span compute, data, AI, networking, VMs, and well, most everything else. Let's get right to it and jump into the featured announcements from Microsoft Ignite. First up, we have a new service that brings the power of OpenAI's GPT-3 natural language model to your Azure workloads. Azure OpenAI service provides the connectivity between your workloads with Azure to OpenAI's commercial API. Microsoft states that, the new Azure OpenAI service will give customers access to OpenAI's powerful natural language GPT-3 models with the security, reliability, and enterprise capabilities of Microsoft Azure. One of the great features of GPT-3 is its ability to customize the output based on a small sampling of examples where customization of similar models requires expansive datasets. This feature has enabled GPT-3 to be leveraged across a wide array of industry verticals. Now, this service is currently invite only. So while most of you won't be able to access the service yet, you can go ahead and begin dreaming up what you'll use it for once it's opened up in the upcoming months. Next up, Microsoft is making it even easier to run your container-based workloads in the cloud with a new service called Azure Container Apps. This service takes a serverless approach to containers by freeing up the developer from having to manage any of the infrastructure or orchestration. Microsoft states that Azure Container Apps enables executing application code packaged in any container and is unopinionated about runtime or programming model. Now this service is ultimately built on Azure Kubernetes service and leverages Kubernetes tools like event-driven auto-scaling, Envoy, and Dapper. Now, while you might think a service like this would be designed for single container applications, it also provides support for multiple containers with a single container app environment. This environment makes it easy to unify observability and logging while providing cross-container communication in your environment. The service is now available in public preview. Next, chaos engineering has been a topic in the cloud space ever since Netflix implemented the principles a decade ago. This approach shifts resiliency from a passive approach to an active one, where you choose to cause failures within an application environment to ensure it can withstand any of the failures it may see. Microsoft has made it easier for other organizations to adopt these practices with the Azure Chaos Studio. This fully managed service, which launched as a public preview at Ignite, includes the ability to simulate over 25 different faults in your application environment. It also gives you the ability to configure and deploy experiments with the tool using ARM templates. At any point, you can roll back the faults to return your application to its normal working state. As mentioned, this service is in public preview and it will be free to use through April 4th of 2022. Next, I have combined several announcements and updates into a single featured announcement that focuses on the hybrid cloud. Microsoft has continued to improve its Azure hybrid cloud story with Arc. At Ignite, we saw improved integration between Arc and Logic Apps, Hyperconverged Infrastructure or HCI, VMware vSphere, and Azure ML. Many new capabilities come with these updates, but I want to highlight a few specifically. First up, instead of just training Azure ML models anywhere with Arc, organizations can now leverage Arc to perform inference against those models with Arc. Next, Microsoft has announced a preview of lifecycle management for VMs leveraging VMware vSphere and Azure Stack HCI deployments from the Azure portal. Finally, the Azure Migration and Modernization Program, or AMMP, has been updated to include Azure Arc-focused scenarios. Check out the link in the notes for all the information on these and other hybrid cloud announcements and updates. For our final featured announcement, Microsoft has released a tool to help you visualize, organize, and ultimately optimize your cloud DevOps workflow. This web-based tool called the DevOps Workflow Generator Tool makes it easy to map out your current workflows. Once you have mapped them, you can generate a PDF report that shows the tools that you are leveraging in each stage. Now, one of the goals of this tool is to enable Microsoft to see which tools are being leveraged by each of the included industry verticals. And there may be future reports or solutions 
that reference the data collected in this tool. This tool is available to use today. Next, we have a lot of platform updates to jump into. First up, Azure API Management now supports pass-through GraphQL support, and this is in preview. Now, this support means that you can import your existing GraphQL-based endpoints into API Management and leverage the security and observability capabilities of API Management. Microsoft has also included some GraphQL-specific features, including query validation and field-based authorization. Check out all of the details in the notes. And next, we'll stay with API Management to discuss native WebSocket support, which is now generally available. You can pull in your existing WebSocket APIs, configure access control policies, and even test those APIs from the console. Check out the link in the notes for more specifics, as this feature isn't supported in all tiers for API management. Next, we'll stay with WebSockets to discuss another feature that is now generally available, and that is Azure Web PubSub. This feature, which takes much of the pain out of scaling real-time applications, also includes an integration with Azure Functions, making it easier to create large-scale serverless interactive solutions. Check out the link in the notes to get started. Next, a few months back, we announced flexible orchestration for scale sets here on Cloud Tracker. Well, this feature is now generally available. And with this capability, you can now leverage the capabilities of scale sets with more tools for large scale workloads, including support for mixed demand types, spreading VMs across fault domains, and changing VM sizes without redeploying the scale set. Next, Microsoft is providing several new VM types focused on typical and memory intensive workloads. For general purpose workloads, there are Intel powered DV5 and EV5 VMs. They are also AMD counterparts to these with the DASV5 and EASV5 VMs. For memory intensive workloads, there is the EBS V5. So if you're interested in any of these, check out all the details in the notes. Next up, Microsoft is working to help organizations more accurately predict their spend on cognitive services with a new commitment pricing tier. According to Microsoft, cognitive services has commitment tiers, which let you commit to using several service features for a fixed fee, enabling you to have a predictable total cost based on the needs of your workload. For organizations that can accurately predict their maximum usage, they now will be able to accurately predict their service cost. Now, next up, Azure Manage Instance for Apache Cassandra is now generally available. This service lets you leverage Cassandra in the cloud or on-premise and handle security, stability, and data replication. Check out the details in the notes. And next, we'll stay with databases to discuss MySQL. And as of this month, the Azure Database for MySQL flexible server feature is now generally available. And with this feature, you can control the database's configuration settings, replication, and even temporarily stop the server when it is not needed. With this announcement, Microsoft has also announced that the feature is now supported in over 30 Azure regions globally. Now we're far from done with databases. And next, we will look at Azure SQL's managed instance. As a reminder, Azure SQL Managed Instance enables you to deploy SQL Server applications either in the cloud or in your own data center. According to Microsoft, the new link feature in SQL Managed Instance connects your SQL servers hosted anywhere to Azure SQL Managed Instance, providing unprecedented hybrid flexibility and database mobility. Now, in addition to the link capability, there are now additional options to increase your performance and maximum storage. Check out all the details in the notes. Next up, Microsoft has announced the preview for SQL Server 2022. And Microsoft calls this the most Azure enabled SQL Server release yet. And it includes support for disaster recovery with Azure SQL Managed Instance, as well as for analytics with the Synapse link for SQL Server. Get all of the exciting details from the link in the notes. Next up, Azure Communication Services has announced a couple of features for the platform. First up, there will be SMS shortcode support later this month. And second, the feature that enables interoperability with Microsoft Teams will be generally available in early December. Learn more about both of these features from the link in the notes. Next, Microsoft has added another solution in the Load Balancer Service Portfolio 
the Gateway Load Balancer. According to Microsoft, with the capabilities of Gateway Load Balancer, you can easily deploy, scale, and manage third-party network virtual appliances, or NVAs. Now, if you're running high-performance applications while leveraging NVAs, you will undoubtedly want to check this one out. Next, the size bump we previously discussed for Azure Service Bus is now generally available. With this, the payload size has increased to 100 megabytes, and that is up from one megabyte. Check out the link in the notes for information on setting the maximum message size for your service bus entities. And finally, the open service mesh solution for Azure Kubernetes Service has reached a version one release and is now generally available. This project provides an open source tool for implementing your microservice mesh architecture alongside standard Kubernetes tools. Check out the link in the notes for more information. For our learning resources this month, I have two different recommendations. First up, if you couldn't attend the Ignite conference virtually, you can still catch up on what you missed. Microsoft has provided the session catalog with on-demand sessions so that you can watch them to your heart's content. Check out the link in the show notes to get access to the hundreds of on-demand sessions available from the event. And finally, Microsoft has released its IoT Signals Report for 2021. If you're interested in IoT trends in your vertical and around the world, this report can be a valuable learning resource. Download the full report from the link in the notes. Now this wraps up an exciting month for Microsoft Azure. Be sure to come back next month to catch all that's new in the cloud here on Cloud Tracker. Thank you.